Hi guys, I've made this video today to show you what I've been building and to perhaps inspire others to try experimenting with G-Seats. I think in terms of sim racing that G-Seats are the way to go. As you can see I built a fiberglass seat that hugs my torso really well. This allows me to build a powerful G-Seat that can put a lot of pressure into my body pretty comfortably. My goal with this seat is to provide as much data as possible into the body so I can know what the car is doing and be more immersed. As you can see, I get a lot of great detail through the chair. The seat base slides forward and backwards on surge. Um, so when I accelerate, I get the seat actually pushing my body into the back of the chair and I feel pressure in my lower back. This feels a whole lot like I'm actually accelerating. You don't quite notice the chair pushing you, but you do notice the pressure in your lower back. I think that is largely due to the whole seat being tilted back at about 25 degrees. The seat base has a good angle to squeeze my lower body and my legs don't slip around on the base. I do find it kind of strange though uh, if it moves forward while I'm braking too much. Uh, releasing my pressure works but if I, if I have a excessive forward motion during braking it doesn't feel right so the tuning is really important to get it dialed in just right. I actually find uh, that I like a little less motion than what you're seeing right now. About an inch of total travel during racing is, is probably ideal. Also you'll notice I have a whole lot of power in those paddles. They're, they really shove me around and give me a lot of detail. And when I'm not turning aggressively, they, they turn a little bit. They push on me just a little. So I have a, a, a large gradient of detail that comes through that torso paddles it's really good but if you look close um, I also get a false cue from the paddles during a turn I get a lot of pressure on the outside of the turn from the paddles pushing against my body and it feels fantastic it's great feedback but uh, it's not good that it pushes my body over and including my head they get pushed to the inside of the turn and this feels well it looks totally wrong when, when I'm driving, especially in VR, in a closed cockpit, especially a close, closed cockpit uh, vehicle, it's really obvious that I'm moving to the inside of the turn rather than G-Force pushing my head to the outside of the turn. At best, it's a little bit distracting, and at worst, it will give you motion sickness. Also, there's a similar effect when I'm accelerating forward and both paddles squeeze. I get pushed forward instead of being thrown backwards. Pressure feels really good, but the position of my head going forwards is totally immersion breaking and it's, it's not good. So to combat these false cues, I decided to do a mover system on the torso part of the chair. So I built a steel frame that the paddles are connected to and on the bottom of that frame there's a U-joint where the whole seat can pivot uh, and then I strap two servo motors on the back so that I can control the motion forward backwards and side to side. The motion is coordinated so that when I get pressure on the outside of the turn the chair also dips to the outside of the turn so that my body is not being thrown to the inside of the turn. At the same time when I'm accelerating forward the chair tips back a little bit to not uh, give me the false cue of getting pushed forward during uh, acceleration. Similarly to the seat base uh, working with surge, I do not like motion when I'm braking to be pushing me forward. I don't like it in the seat base like I said earlier and I really don't like it in the torso mover. So I just tuned that part out. The seat base doesn't move forward when I'm braking. It might in these videos a little bit but I've been working on the tune here and there and find that I like no motion forward during braking. This torso mover that I built works really well to negate the false cues that I was getting before. Sometimes I tune it so low that I can barely even tell it's there and I drive for a while and get used to it and then I turn it off and it makes a huge difference. Uh, you notice it a lot when you turn it off like that. When it's all working it all just kind of blends together and you just forget that there's more complicated stuff going on. You're just driving and feel very connected to the car. It works pretty well. A big bonus that I didn't consider when I was designing this is the punishing motion I get during crashes or bumps with other cars. 
Of course, I can control this in the tuning uh, anywhere from almost break the rig to no motion at all during a crash, but I find that I like a good punch, especially from contact from other cars, like when I'm doing rally cross or something. I like the punch motion so much that before too long I crashed and broke the temporary wooden frame that this thing is built on. And as a result, uh, I'm now working on a steel frame and we'll continue to tune and experiment with this cool feature. So check out this footage of me driving next to this red Lamborghini. In a moment he's going to bump me and I lose control. And then I spent the rest of my driving trying to catch it only to crash and look at the sim reacting to that. Shit. Oh my god.